Ian Chorton, Chairman of NHS Kerno, you've said many times that this does not amount to Cornwall Council taking over the health service in Cornwall, but Cornwall Councillor Rob Rochell, the Cabinet Member responsible for health, says it does. One of you's wrong. I think all of the evidence and, and documents and discussions to date have said that, that, is, that it's not the case. This is not about any one organisation taking over another. This is all about, and we talk about strategic commissioning, it's all about how we work together how we can make decisions together and how we can make the, make the best use out of the, the, the public pound, whether that, be a, a health, whether that be a social care pound or an NHS pound. At the moment, the NHS and health and care system is very fragmented, and what we want to do is to try and bring that together. So at the moment, we're starting on a process where we're going to agree to, uh, uh, hopefully, just to sit down in a room and, and to agree strategic decisions together, what it is we're really here for, what we're trying to do for our population, uh, and this is not a, not a takeover in any shape or form. Well, Councillor Rochels used the phrase uh, bringing uh, NHS Kerno under the auspices, are his words, under the auspices of Cornwall Council. And at the end of the day, somebody has to be in charge. Well, it's not going to be you. Uh, the, the, the papers as, as they're presented are not about any one person being in charge. It's about how we make joint decisions together. Uh, what will absolutely uh, be, be the case is that each organisation is set up in statute. Uh, say I speak on behalf of the clinical commissioning group. I'm responsible to my members. That they are the 60 GP practices uh, here, here in Cornwall on the Isles of Scilly. And I'm accountable to them. Uh, and the decisions that we make uh, on using the, uh, the, uh, the resources that we have to, to, to commission and ultimately purchase health services on behalf of our population uh, must be uh, um, uh, must align to the, the, the NHS constitution uh, standards but also uh, be uh, reasonable to, to our members. I'd just like to explore briefly exactly what it is that we are integrating here because back in December 2016 the language then, and I've got a copy of the letter, is for an accountable care organisation. Mm -hmm. Sometime over the next three or four months that became an accountable care system. Who made the decision to change that and why? I'm not sure that that was a decision made at any single point in time, but what's happened over the, the last few months is that we, we've come to realise that this isn't about forming a brand new organisation uh, with all of the, uh, the wherewithal that that entails. This is about how we build relationships and about how we, we work together more, more effectively. This is not about creating one single organisation to provide health and care uh, in Cornwall and the Isles of Scilly. This is about uh, developing partnerships. Does it, how, does how it matter if we call it an organisation or a system or a vehicle or a body or a partnership or, or any of those things if at the end of the day we're talking about a five-year place-based capitated budget that is what we're, we're describing isn't it I mean we all agree that it's a five-year place-based capitated budget for running healthcare in Cornwall I don't think anyone's been as prescriptive of that to say that we're talking about... That's what it says a, in the draft business case. ...about a five-year uh, specific budget. What we're doing is trying to plan for the future. Well, that's what it says in the draft business case. We're trying to plan for the future, and, and, and I think until we get to a position where we have those figures and we can then present what, what, what would be, might be a business case for how we might provide services, that's the time, of course, we, we, we want to carry on and have more detailed discussions with... with, with, with can I just clarify, is there any confusion over what the draft business case says? So the draft business case is, a, is about us describing how we might, well, what would it mean? What would it, what would it mean? Well, it means to, a five-year place-based capitated budget. You, you, you've interrupted. What, would it, what it would mean would be to, what, what would it mean from a business case point of view, what would it mean to bring four organisations into a room to start talking together? Not about merging those organisations or about forming a new organisation. That's very much not what the ethos of this is about. This is about partnership working and how we work together recognising that we will remain as statutory organisations. The Clinical Commissioning Group has to remain there. It's set up in the 12, 2012 Health and Social Care Act. It will continue to exist and will remain accountable through its lines of uh, uh, accountability up through NHS England and the Department of Health and also back to our member practices. Well, I'm not sure I'm any clearer now about what the difference is between an accountable care organisation or system or partnership or, or the latest language is vehicle or body. Uh, like I said, I've tried to use the words which are in the draft business case can you think of a more succinct or accurate way to describe what it is that we are integrating we what we're integrating is how we can uh, agree together how we can make best use of the public money that we have available to us 
OK. Uh, you will be familiar, I'm sure, with the two judicial reviews which are already underway. Yes. Um, NHS England is, is having to defend those. Uh, the first of them is due to get to Leeds High Court on the 24th of April, and the basis of that judicial review is because they are moving there to a place-based capitated budget. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether it's called an accountable care organisation or an accountable care system or a partnership. The language doesn't matter. It's how they're planning to spend the money. And as, I've, as I've said, it's the same method that we're talking about here in Cornwall according to the draft business plan. Now, given that's the case, how is Cornwall going to stay out of the courts here? I mean, this is inevitable going to drag us into the judicial review? I don't believe it's going to drag us into the ju judicial review. The judicial review is around a couple of areas in the country who are much further ahead in this than we are even thinking about in Cornwall in the eyes of Scilly. The judicial review is around where contracts are being procured for how services might be provided. And the one particular so the one I know, know about is in Dudley, around primary care services and community services, where they've gone out to formal tender. We're nowhere near that. We are in the, at the position at the moment of improving our relationships, of how we make decisions together, how we can, can, can collaborate, how we can, can, can work together in an integrated, coordinated way. That is not about trying to set up single contracts uh, that, of course, uh, I say, are, are, are being challenged in the, in the course at the moment. So I don't believe for a second that we are uh, at risk of being uh, um, subject to a legal challenge for the discussions we're having. These are sensible discussions that the people of Cornwall and the Isles of Scilly have talked about for years. Why don't we agree together? Why don't we make decisions together about how we get better services and improve the quality of, of, of what's on offer? We can't do that by sitting within our own organisations and making decisions on our, on, our, on our own behalf. If we get together and, and, and understand how we can all help and support each other, then that's got to be better for the people of Cornwall. Finally, Kate Canali said today that she expected that whatever it is that we're creating will be created and up and running on its own statutory footing by 2020, which is perhaps, you know, still seems some way off. But when we get to 2020, do you still think that NHS Kerno is going to exist? NHS Kerno has to exist. It is a statutory organisation. It's set down in the 2012 Health and Social Care Act. There must be a clinical commissioning group until the law is changed.